Here we are. Another day, another unboxing video. We have got a very large box that was delivered today. I was actually, um, it arrived from miniaturemarket.com and uh, I completely forgot what I had ordered. I actually had to look up uh, my receipt on the website to remember what I ordered. I couldn't even remember it. So, um, but as you can see on the screen, we've got, well, what appears to be four games, but it's actually a lot more uh, inside the black box. So um, these were all part of the a big March markdown sale. Um, it's unfortunately it's over, but uh, miniaturemarket.com is doing. They do a lot of sales like this, so it's worth subscribing to their newsletter. Check them out. Um, they had you know, a big Thanksgiving sale or you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, whatever that I ordered a bunch of games from. So. Um, but they do a lot of sales like this, and I didn't look up the original prices, so I don't know exactly what the markdown was, how much I saved, but it was quite a bit. Their sales are usually pretty good. So um, I went through, I picked out a couple games that seemed interesting, that intrigued me. I looked them up on Board Game Geek. I watched some reviews. I know there was a couple, um, um, some reviews. I think one of them I watched a review on uh, the Dice Tower. One of them I think I watched a um, Rotto Runs Through on... Um, and then I looked up on Board Game Geek what the AEG black box was because I really like AEG um, publishing, uh, Alterac Entertainment Group, I think is what it stands for. I don't know, but I like their games. They make some really good games. I can't think of any off the top of my head other than Love Letter. Um, but apparently this black box is something that they do every year around Thanksgiving, I believe, and it has a bunch of games inside of it. So there was like seven games inside this. So, and so the black box was like $28, and it's like $28 for seven games. Most of them are micro games, two-player games, or two to four-player games, uh, which I like. I like a micro game, something that's small, it's, you know, compact, it's portable, and, um, you know, plays quick. So I like having those options, those little filler games or something. If you're at a game day, you know, meetup group or something, and you need a filler, or if you're, um, you know, I take micro games with us to Krav Maga class, so when the, the girls are doing their class, me and Little Rant will play a micro game. We play a lot of Love Letter. We've played some Tiny Epic Galaxy. So it'll be fun to add some uh, more more uh, variety to those. So there is one that I know is in there is Adventure Time Love Letter. Um, but that's the only one that I remember. There's a lot more. So let's get to it and see what we've got. All right. We've got our lovely packing material. So let's tell what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get all of the boxes out here. So we got Grog Island, where I believe you play a retired pirate trying to still make money from active pirates. We've got A Fistful of Dinero, a game of violence and greed. Those are always fun. We've got Sky Traders, a game of commerce and intrigue in the age of sky ships. So it's a little bit of um, steampunk. Game. And we've got the AEG Black Box. And nothing else. All right. So, yeah. So, I mean, just to give you a rough idea, the Black Box, I guess, is 28. Grogon is 25. Fistful of Dinero was 10 bucks, And Sky Traders was 15 So, yeah, just to give you an idea, um, like I said, the Black Box was $28, but there's like seven games in there or something. Um, let's rotate that just a little bit. Um, Grog Island was like 25 bucks. Um, Fistful of Dinero was 10, and I think Sky Traders was 15, or, or Fistful of Dinero was 15 and 10 or something. So um, they were both on clearance, but really, really good sales. So really good prices on those. So I am most excited about the AEG Black Box, so we're going to save that until later. So let us start with the small box here Fistful of Dinero. A game of violence and greed. It is for three to six players, ages 10 and up, 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, published by Homeland Games and Magic House Games. Uh, game designed by Charlie Thiel. Um, published in, okay, that's the, so uh, let's see here. This one I watched um, a a review of on the Dice Tower with Tom Vassell. 
Um, most board gamers, I'm sure, are pro or, you know, are probably familiar with the Dice Tower uh, series on YouTube. If you're not, check it out. Great series, great review series. Really enjoy their stuff. I actually just backed them on Kickstarter for their their upcoming like 12th season or something like that. Um, so they produced a lot of really good videos, um, and I've seen a lot of reviews. They've helped me decide whether or not to purchase a lot of games. So. Happy to get back. Uh, let's see here. Fistful of Dinero is a competitive card drafting game where players choose a selection of actions from a series of rotating card hands. Actions are executed, blood is shed, and mounds of coins are snatched. So there's six gun belts, which are the player boards, two six-sided dice, 15 ammo markers, a first player token, 20 poker chips, and 140 game cards. In a very small, compact box. So this one thing to note, like I said, this is a minimum three-player game, three to six. So you can't even see that. There we go. So we got our rule book here. It is ages 10 plus, which I like. It's um, you know 10 plus, uh, eight, 10 plus. I'm kind of yeah, on eight plus. I'm usually okay with letting Little Miss Rant play. Um, she falls a little bit under there, but still. Um, you know, I always try to get games that, you know, that more, all of the kids can play. So, um, very detailed um, instruction book. Uh, a lot of, it's not just text. There's a lot of pictures and, and graphics and stuff to go along with, which I kind of like. I think it helps a little bit, you know, helps to kind of explain things a little clearer. I don't know. I just kind of like it. So these are the gun belts. Looks like, yep, they're all the same. So three actions, draft and plan, receive six cards, take one, place it on your belt, then pass the rest, execute. Okay, so it's card drafting. Pass the hands, draft a card, like uh, Sushi Go for those who have played that. Execute, players take turns resolving their action cards in number order, and then you clean up, discard them, flip a damage card, first player chooses number to go hit. Main weapon, offhand weapon, your money pouch down here, so. Um, give you a rough idea of what it looks like. So, good. Um, oh, they're two sided. The back, are they the same on both sides? It looks like they're the same. Uh, the difference, it looks like which hand is your main hand and which hand's your off hand. It switches. It's like you got your main weapon over here. And you got your main weapon over here on the reverse side. So maybe if you like your left hand or right hand. So um, it's I don't know the material. It's kind of like a glossy card stock. Um, I mean it's 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 you know it's not terrible card stock, but I would think you know for I don't know I would like for player boards something like this. Maybe something a little bit thicker. Maybe a cardboard even something like that. Other than just you know a nice. It's not really glassy, but like a matte cardstock. I don't know what to describe it. It's a little bit thicker than your standard cardstock, which is good. Um, but it's it's almost like just regular plain. It's a little thicker than plain card material. So I don't know for for board game for player board something like this. I would prefer um, to have like you know a cardboard or something. I don't know. Again, personal preference. So uh, these are what are these? Ammo markers. Yeah. Ammo markers, there's nothing, I'm not going to pull these out of the bag, there's nothing to them, there's little gray wooden blocks, that's all. Our 2D6, our poker chips, probably just, you know, yeah, standard, super lightweight, nothing fancy about the poker chips. And a bunch of cards, 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 these are, all of these looks like the game cards, yeah. Now there's the first player token, this, now, this is something that I didn't quite understand in watching the review um, exactly how the mechanic works but the first player token depending on how things are going or whatever I don't know first player token can actually pass um, to the left or to the right so you can see to the pass to the right pass to the left there's two of them which is weird um, so weapons cards okay so peacemaker and you got a damage card a light wound, one wound shock, 
oh, it's a two-sided, heavy wound, crippled. So there is something in there that determines, you know, whether it's a heavy wound or a light wound. Light wound, stagger, heavy wound again, crippled. Um, so these are all just looks like the weapons and damage cards. They're kind of sorted. They're, they're not sorted together. They're, you can see they're interspersed. That's really weird. Whatever. That's just a stupid gripe. But Quicksilver, Flying Stars, the Equalizer, Sharp's Rival, again, light wounds, heavy wounds. So uh, they appear to be standard card size. So standard card size, uh, standard size sleeves. Put that right there. And we'll open up the rest of the cards. Okay, so in here, it looks like these are all action cards. So, fire, attack another player. Um, looks like there's some playing cards. So it's aim plus one to attack, jack of diamonds, four spades. So that, you know, there's a, a poker feel to it. There's something to do with poker in there. Mad dash, bounty. Evil Ben, Jacqueline Jinx, Kristen the Squirrel, the Reverend. Uh, cover, cover and fire, quick fire, tomahawk, reload. Uh, so obviously we don't know what any of the mechanics are and whatnot, but um, I was intrigued enough by watching the review from the Dice Tower that I picked it up. I think it was like 10, 15 bucks again. So uh, looks interesting, but I definitely like the box, nice and small. All the components fit in there. Very nice, nothing too over the top. You know, everything just, I mean, it just fits in there nice. There's just something about that. I mean, it feeds my OCD, I don't know. There's just something about that that I really like. You know, box is not overly large, just enough space for all the components. So that is a fistful of dinero from Homeland Games and Magic House Games. Let's see what's next. Grog Island. Grog Island is ages 10 and up, two to four players, 40 to 75 minutes. Looks like developed by Michael Reinick and published by Pegasus Spiel and Eggert Spiel. Um, yeah, there's a couple names on there. Yeah, Eggert Spiel and Pegasus Spiel. Um, there's German uh, instructions on the back. There's German and English instructions on the back. So it is a Euro game. I mean, you can you can almost kind of tell. Um, you know, it's got a Euro game look to it. It's um, let's see, it, it does. Yeah, you know, very innovative um, dice rolling. Yeah, in this unique dice auction game, you try to get your hands on promising pirate investments. Uh, however, the auctions are not just about placing the highest bid. Passing at just the right moment can also be very rewarding because only then will you find the time to snatch the desired goods and trade with the landing merchant ships. Merchant ships. With its innovative use, innovative use of dice and its engaging gameplay, ta Grog Island is a tactical treat for anyone looking for an unusual gaming experience. This one, I believe I watched um, Rotto Runs Through on it. Uh... And it was, um, th there definitely is an interesting auction mechanic to it. Like, so dice rolling auction game, uh, and then resource generation uh, as well. Um, a little bit of like a um, worker placement type resource generation. Um, so let's open it up, take a quick peek inside. So this is, holy crap, Jesus. Oh, that's cool. So that's the re that's the reverse of the game board. That's just the, the, the picture from the cover of the box, but that's kind of cool. So that's the, the game board. It's a quad-fold game board. And you can see it all. So that's a really decent size. This is a really, really decent size game board. Very nice. Very big. Nice big uh, instruction manual. Again, a lot of pictures, not just text. I hate it. It's just text. I mean, 
the more pictures the better I don't like to read really I mean, really really flimsy but that, it's just that um, I mean, it's just the instruction manual but you can see I mean this is the list of components that's the component list for the game I mean, there's a lot to it this one I think I picked up for it was 25 bucks whoa 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 what's this oh that's the German rules okay so if you speak German and you or you want to learn German there you go so 46 gold cards 32 treasure cards 28 parrot cards overview cards auction dice bunch of you know 36 meeples trade markers regular markers ship tiles cloud tiles goods tiles lock tiles starting player like 20 plus coins markers so a lot of punch outs a lot of punch outs my kids are gonna like that so a lot of room in here but there, there needs to be I mean there's a bunch of punch outs so whoa I'm already punching them out so um, okay maybe not as many punch outs as I thought but you know a decent amount so two uh, punch boards full um, plastic bags included fantastic looks like enough for the game the, the, the market I don't know there's four of them though I, I just I, I love it and you got all these punch outs and the resource markers and all that and everything it's just it's nice that they include those uh, you got your these are your auction dice the different colors correspond to different locations and so the colors do come into play as well um, all of your character meeples these sound fairly lightweight like lightweight wooden meeples you can kind of hear that they're very very lightweight wooden meeples little pirate meeple there's a little peg leg look at the little peg leg uh purple black red white and this is like a the, the trade token and there's some other markers that are a little bit smaller circles but little peg leg pirate meeples i love it so these are they're more of a lightweight wood you can just tell they're not like your st standard wooden meeple they're a little bit lighter weight and they sound like that too um all the various cards and whatnot oh, i love this too when they have that little strip that it makes it so easy to open up plastic sleeves or plastic cards god i love that all right germans know how to make a board game so these are all the various different types of cards very small cards so i'm sure there are sleeves for cards this size but i've never seen them i don't know um so much much smaller cards but these are your um oh, those are the various player tokens um, what are these cards? Oh, these are the objective cards, the little scrolls. Have various objectives that you need to achieve to earn victory points at the end. You've got parrot cards, which they're like give you dice or a thumbs up or thumbs down or something. Treasure cards that are three, two, one gold. So, um, and that's all that's in the box. So, I'm gonna stick those back in there. Uh, a lot of room inside the box, but got to punch out the board size. Man, I just can't get over it. That's a really big board. So that is Grog Island. Again, two to four players, ages 10 and up. It's a character placement, resource generation. Not really an area control. Um, actually, I actually know what I'm going to do. Um, but it's a worker placement, um, resource generation game with the, the dice rolling um, auction style type bidding I guess I'm gonna take that little rubber band they gave us and rubber band those cards together all right so a bunch of new games we get to bring to our meetup group next week or not next week next time all right so that's Grog Island next up Sky Traders uh, this looks like a fantasy flight games a game by Giochino Prestigiacomo, I butchered that, I'm sure. Uh, published by Dust Games and Fantasy Flight, Fantasy Flight Games. I can I can pronounce that. So, um, alrighty. If you're into, I think this one I I saw. I don't know if I watched the Rado runs through or if I watched the Dice Tower review. I almost always watch one of the two. 
either Rotter runs through or Dice Tower review. I don't quite remember. Um, if you're into steampunk, though, it's definitely got that feel to it. Uh, Fantasy Flight Supply, protective card sleeves, gray one, yellow one. I'm not sure what the, the colors mean there, but I know the gray card sleeves are the standard Fantasy Flight sleeves, or the, the Fantasy Flight standard size. So, um, oh, not a children's toy, hobby gaming product. This is it, two to five players, ages 14 and up, two to four hour gameplay. Very long gameplay. Very long. Uh, let's see. Navigate your starship from port to port, dodging pirates as you go or become one yourself. Buy and sell goods, invest in contraband, or make quick and dirty money disposing of sludge, the toxic byproduct of phlogiston, a newly discovered wonder fuel. Um, you're not merely the captain of a flying vessel. As an honored member of the Sky Guild, you have tremendous power to sway the supply and demand of goods. Manipulate the commodities exchange in the black market more cleverly than your rivals. You could amass a huge fortune or even claim the ultimate prize, the title of Master of the Sky Guild. So it looks like um, definite some um, market manipulation, commodity speculation type game. I actually just played one of those um, called Mars Needs Mechanics. It was from our February board game Bento. So played that um, at our board game meetup group this past weekend. Um, I lost, but it was fun. It was quick. It was interesting. Fantasy Flight Games. Oh, yeah, this is just an advertisement thing for Fantasy Flight Games. This is a thick rule book. This is the rule book. 30 pages of rules. I mean, it's two to four hours. But this game was like 15 bucks, too. I mean, if I'm going to get a game that's, you know, a two to four hour game, it's a good, you know, long playing game. For 15 bucks? I mean, phew. I'm going to get my money's worth out of playing this game. So, a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of text. Rantis doesn't like the picture, the lack of pictures. There's the pictures. Uh, that's a little bit better. Big component list as well, you can see. I mean, this is the component list here. A lot of components. These appear to be player cards or player ships. Nice big personal player ships. Mm, wow, good heavy duty plastic bag too that it's in. Same, you know, card stock, but good bag to protect it in. Noblesse oblige, oblige, I don't know, commanded by Comte Arnold de Rodola. My French is terrible. The Divine Breeze, I can pronounce that one. Commanded by Baron Keto von Peru. So. Alrighty. I like this. I like the sleeve, the, the, the plastic bag for storing the sleeves. Um, punch boards. Three of them. Three of them, and they're all in plastic. Woo, lots of money. A lot of money to punch out. Various planets, locations, etc., etc., to punch out there. Look at this. They're all already bagged. I love it. I love it. So, okay, this is probably this, the yellow size one. So, Fantasy Flight Yellow. So, this is about the size of the cards in Grog Island. So, I'm guessing these are the yellow Fantasy Flight sleeves, yellow sleeve size. These are the gray size, your standard sleeves. Um,. We're not going to go through all of the, the various cards and everything there. Um, little tokens for something. They're little different colored stackable tokens. You can see them kind of stack on top of each other there. These are the player tokens and... Um, oh yeah, these are the player tokens. So you got a little base, the red, yellow, green, blue base, and then a, a sculpt or a bust to put on top of it. Pull these out and... Show. So, yeah, it just kind of snaps in there. Pretty nice, too. Snaps in there nice and neat. So, we've got the green base and then the little dude's bust there. So, it's not going to focus very well on that, but there you go. So, and it just, you know, it just snaps in there like that. So, and it, it snaps in there. I mean, something I had to, you know, really pull to get it out of there, but. Snaps in there nice. And then a series of uh, mini D6s, colored die for each player. 
So a lot of components to this one as well. I have a feeling we're, def we're definitely going to get our money's worth on this game. There's a lot to this. We're going to get our money's worth there. I know it. Two to four, two to f or two to five players, two to four hours for 15 bucks. Heck yeah, dude. So that is Sky Traders. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the one that I've definitely been looking forward to the AEG Black Box. Black Box 2015. I think this is the second one they did. Um, according to Board Game Geek, or what I found on Board Game Geek, I think there's only two of them. There's a 2014 black box and a 2015 black box. Nothing like that. I don't even say anything about it. All right. All covered up. All right. So. Wow. Okay. Holy crap. All right, so, yeah, a lot of mini card games, just single decks. Yeah, like, each one of these is a game here, so. Um, wow. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I have no idea what all the little AEG tokens are for. But a whole bag of little colored AEG shield tokens. Or the AEG logo. So, um, they're not individually packed. I mean, they're, they're, they're separated from one another, obviously. But um, they're not you know, packed in you know, their own packaging and stuff. So, let's separate this out and figure out what games we've got. First up, Agent Hunter. Mini card game. We're not going to go through and open up all these these games here tonight, just because most of them are just card games. And so, uh, a game of espionage and deduction for two to five players, ages twelve and up. It was let's see here, designed by Mike Elliott. Obviously published by AEG, Alderac Entertainment Group, not Alterac. Alderac, Alderac. All right, all righty. 20 agent cards, 2 reference cards, 10 decoy tokens, and this rule sheet. I don't see the decoy tokens unless they're somewhere else. Maybe these tokens? I don't know. No. I wonder if they're in here. All right, now i got to look. No, I don't have the decoy tokens. All right, so very interesting artwork. Looks very similar to Love Letter, but who knows? Numbers 0 through 9 or 0 through 10. Um, blue agent, red agent deck. So um, two-player game. So th this one is just two players. But again, just a single deck of cards, so it's very easy to move and bring it out. Um, Take the 10 red agent cards and the five red decoy tokens. Well, it does not look like we got, I mean, we might have to use these because I don't see any decoy tokens anywhere or anything that could be mistaken for a decoy token. A note on tokens. Several games in the black box use various tokens. We have provided exclusive new tokens in this box. So use the ones needed per the rules. There we go. Those are preview of titles coming through the end of this year and early next year. Why first? Flock, greedy, greedy goblins, and more fun in 2016. Cool. Okay. So those are the tokens then. Eliminate all of your opponent's safe houses while having a few of your own 
eliminated as possible. The game ends when all three of a player's safe houses have been eliminated. The player who scores the most victory points at the end of the game wins. That is Agent Hunter. All right, so let's... that there. I'm going to need some rubber bands or something to keep all these separated. Um, there we go. If I, you know, keep them all in here, which I may or may not. So, next, who stole the cookie? Three to eight players, two to five minutes. Um, I'm not seeing an age on here. Game designed by Chris Costignetto. Also the development producer, developer. Oh, and then Art Christy Sanderson. So, contents. There are three cookie cards, 15 crumb cards. Um, it just goes right into the setup. It doesn't talk anything about the objective or anything like that. So, nothing to read out there. A couple game variants on the back, but very, very quick mini game. I don't know if this is maybe um, like a bluffing game. Determine how many cards you'll be playing with. So depending on the number of players, you take a certain number of cookie cards and a certain number of crumb cards. Uh, everyone draws two, looks at them, places both face down. Player who most recently ate the most cookies is the starting player. Um, ah, you can look at any card in front of any player or in the center, switch the position of any two cards. Shuffle the two cards in front of you. Declare yourself the winner by doing the following in order. Player who correctly declares the location of two cookies wins the game. Cool. So there's two cookies in uh, three to six players, and then there's three cookies in a seven or eight player game. So it's um, not really bluffing, but um, deduction. You're just trying to find out where the cookie cards are at. Um, by peeking, looking, shuffling, things like that. So that is Who Stole the Cookie. Very quick, though, five-minute game. Next up, Adventure Time Love Letter. Uh, I don't know if that's any different than the regular love letter. Let's see here. Ah, uh, the two to four players, ages 10 and up. Now, it is 10 and up, but my six-year-old, Little Miss Rant, plays Love Letter all the time, and she kicks our butt all the time. So, um, there are two big, important new rules you need to see on page 15 and 16. If a player plays Jake and Finn is discarded by the effect, or vice versa, that player wins the round and a token of affection. It's great to get best buddies together. If you win the round by having a companion card in your hand, you gain an additional token. All right. I've never watched Adventure Time. It's never appealed to me. Um, but I certainly enjoy games. And we can, you know, I'll mix it up, play new games. Um, so, especially a classic game. Not, a, I mean, a classic, but a game that, that I like, um, that we play a lot and add a couple new twists to that so i think little rant does watch um adventure time i think my girls do too but not by my choice so so the list of cards guard in, in order from one to eight guard royal subject gossip companion hero wizard lady princess same uh, card effects um as regular love letter Guards, guess a player's hand. Royal subject lets you look at a hand. Gossip, compare hands. The lower hand is out. Companion, protection until your next turn. Hero, one player discards his or her hand. Um, wizard, trade hands. Lady, discard if caught with wizard or hero. And princess, lose if discarded. So, banana guards. So there's the banana guard cards. So for anyone who uh, likes and watches Adventure Time, I'm sure you'll get all these references that I don't. Uh, the royal subject. This is your priest card. For regular, uh, oh, that's, okay, so there's two of them, real subject. Uh, the gossip cards, this is your baron card. Compare hands, lower one is out. Companion card, this is your um, handmaiden, number four. Hero cards is your princes, in this case Finn and Jake. 
And your king is the wizard. The lady is the countess. And the princess is the princess. So, that is Adventure Time Love Letter. A couple of additional rules over the regular love letter. But. All right, next up. Lost Legacy. This is a big rule book for a little game. Two to four players, ages 14 and up, a game by Hayato Kisa, uh, Kisaragi and Seiji Kanai. Seiji Kanai, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but um, Seiji Kanai did Love Letter. Yeah. So... Um, so same designer as Love Letter. Looks there's some similarities in in the rule book and whatnot um, that I can see between this and Love Letter. But um, does it have an objective? No, nope, it's got the story. Lost Legacy is a game of risk, deduction, and luck. Each turn you play a card in order to eliminate other players from the game, or discover where the Lost Legacy card can be found. When the deck runs out of cards, investigation phase begins. Player who determines where the Lost Legacy can be found wins. Nobody finds the Lost Legacy, then everybody loses. So we're not going to go through and open up all of the, the, the games. Next is Pretense by Jason Tagmeyer, a game night social meta game. Nice. These are the role tokens model, nerd, old dog, shadow, teacher, sport, sore loser, champ, muscle, the king, klutz, maestro, and so on. Um, Card deck here. Not a lot of cards. Do it. Two to twelve players, ages fourteen. Wow, twelve players. So it's a party game, game night. Yeah, party game. The six-page rule book. Very simple. Oh, um, it's board game night. Players are dealt rolls. Have the entire night to complete their secret objectives. By the end of the night, the truth will come out. Nice. So it seems very similar. I played a game like this um, in my game group uh, about a month or two ago called Two Rooms and a Boom. And it seems very similar to that. To, the goal is to obtain the most roll cards over the course of the night and to avoid being caught and removed from the game. Yeah, a game of pretense is played during the entire game night. There are no rounds, no turns, and no time limit. Huh. Basic principles that players' roles are hidden. Each role has a secret objective. Such as the king. If another player sits in your seat, you may take their roll card. <laughs> if at any point you think you know a player's secret role, you may say it out loud. That player must reveal his or her role. The correctly accused player is out of the game and their role is removed from play. If you're incorrect, you're out of the game. Give the accused player your role card without revealing it to the others. He or she now assumes your role. At the end of the night, each face-up revealed role card that a player has is worth one point. The player with the most points wins. Eliminated players can still win if they have the most points. In the event of a tie, players should schedule another game night. That looks pretty cool. Bookworm, if another player hands you a rule book, you may take their roll card. <laughs> That's awesome. That's going to be a fun one. All right. Empire Engine, Cold War Edition. Tiny, tiny, tiny game. Two to four players, ages 14 and up, a game by Chris Marling and Matthew Dunstan. That's the intro. Each player takes on the role of a nation caught up in the Cold War. During the game, players simultaneously choose whether their nations focus on espionage, statecraft, nuclear deterrence, covert missions, counterintelligence, forging alliances, or crisis control. Players use their mandates to set their nation's agendas, and each round pursue the actions on top of the edges of their agendas. The player who scores the most points for the influence, operatives, and warheads in their score pile at the end of the game is the winner. This looks really involved for such a tiny, tiny game. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a tiny rule book here, but it's still 30 pages. Some hints from the designers at the end. 
This looks really, really involved for such a small game. That one right there. And last, but not least, this game here, Bacon Wars. There's some bacon punch-out tokens. Two decks of cards. Bacon Wars, the frying pan, the thick cut orchard. Cast iron and ready to rumble. That's a lot of cards. We're not gonna open those up, but a game by Ben Byrne for two to four players ages 14 and up. Oh yeah, the kingdom of Baconia. In Bacon Wars, you are a baron or baroness vying for dominance over Baconia in the power vacuum the queen left when she died. Can you be the Baron that seizes control over the delicious land? Each player controls bacon orchards, because bacon's grow on tree bacon grows on trees, and uses bacon strips, yielded in part by those orchards, to play cards. Cards come in several different types and require different bacon costs to be paid in order to be played. Players take turn drawing cards, spending bacon to play them until there's a winner. To win, a player must either be the only player with any orchards left or have two level three orchards at the beginning of their turn. quick reference on the back of the book as well so that is bacon wars there are some interesting ones in there pretense looks a lot of fun um let's see lost legacy bacon wars looks cool oh empire engine that looks really cool um who stole the cookie great little filler agent hunter be interesting i like that i like uh, the adventure time love letter i like that that there's a you know a little bit of a twist on the classic love letter um, which I'm sure they all have them. I haven't played any other love letters, but I'm sure they've all got that. So very cool. So that, excuse me, the AEG black box 2015 edition, along with sky traders, grog Island and a fist full of dinero. So that's it for this RLR unboxing in total. We got 10 new games, 10 games for our, I think it was like 85 bucks, including shipping. So, like I said, not a bad sale that they had going on. A lot of components. I mean, um, you know, Sky Traders, a two to four hour game, so we're going to get some really good uh, value out of that for 15 bucks. Seven games in the AG Black Box, but we got some different types of games. We got a little bit of Euro style, worker placement, uh, a little bit of territory control. Actually, I don't think it's territory control, but worker placement, um, you know, economy game, Fistful of Dinero. Um, is I don't remember what type of game that. What did that say? What type? Um, competitive card drafting game. That's right. Sky Traders. There's a little bit of um, market manipulation and commodity speculation game, and then a lot of different stuff in the AEG black box. A lot of micro games, two two player games, very small, um, things like that. Good filler games to have. Uh, so looking forward to playing uh, a lot of these. Um, of course, we'll post reviews once we've got five games played in. Um, and all of our games, you can check out our, we'll add them all to our profile on boardgamegeek.com, which you can check out the link below to our collection. And you can also see our gameplays uh, every time I play a game, whether it's with my kids or a board game group, meetup group, or anywhere. Um, I'm logging it on Board Game Geek. So all of the games, every time I play a game, it's logged there. Um, so let me know in the comments below. There's going to be links to all the games on Board Game Geek as well as we'll put a link to miniaturemarket.com as well. Definitely check them out. I love them. I've raved and ranted about them plenty because um, I really like their website and they have good deals uh, on games all the time. So give them, uh, uh, give them a look and see what you think. For anyone who's based in the St. Louis area, that's where um, miniaturemarket.com is located or Miniature Market. So you can go down and check out their physical store. Um, but uh, if you have played any of the games or if any of the games particularly intrigue you, you have any comments on them, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And uh, you can hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Check out our other unboxing videos. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on YouTube. And check us out on twitch.tv slash rantus522 for all of our broadcasting and streaming that we do. Until next time for our next unboxing, we will see you later.